In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. St. Peter tells us today, You were once all little sheep gone astray, but now you are converted to the shepherd and bishop of your souls. I will cease now from preaching my sermon in the usual way and take a look down to the young people right in front of me. If I'm wearing glasses today, it is not so that you cannot recognize me. It is for two reasons. One, perhaps so that I look a little more serious and you pay attention for the entire sermon. And as always, you know from your brothers and sisters, it's important afterwards at your little First Communion party today to quiz your parents to make sure they were listening as well. The other reason is that I woke up with a terrible sore throat. As a child, I think you know there's nothing worse than waking up with a sore throat. But I have very important words to address to you, dear First Communicants, so please do listen for a little bit. It could be no more beautiful day for you to make your First Communion. Perhaps you have been looking carefully at everything you've seen up here since you've come into the church. The priest today is wearing a beautiful white and blue vestment with an image on the back of Our Lady of the Rosary at Fatima. There are other beautiful things on the altar as well. Today we are using a very large and old missal, almost 200 years old. And the chalice we will use today at Mass is over 500 years old. All of these beautiful things are to remind us of how important today is. Today is called Good Shepherd Sunday. We all know what a good shepherd is. And today we speak about our Lord Jesus Christ as the Good Shepherd, the one who has laid down his life for all the sheep, not only the ones who have never left, but even ones who have gone astray to lead them back. Today we celebrate something else as well, something I told you I was going to ask you about. I asked the people about it at the 8 o'clock Mass, and nobody said anything. So I'm assuming nobody knew the answer. But I'm going to start by asking you this question today. Even if you know, I know you'll be polite and you won't call out. But the question is, you see the priests here wearing these long black robes. It's very hard to keep a straight face when you mispronounce it as a casket, but we all know that really it's supposed to be called a cassock. But we here wear black cassocks. And you may have seen before pictures of the Pope. He wears a white cassock. And so a good question for anyone would be, and if you're paying attention now, you'll be able to ask people this yourself, why does the Pope wear a white cassock? Well, the answer is a very simple one. It is because of the wonderful saint whom we celebrate today. At the same time we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday, today is May 5th, and it is the feast of Saint Pius V, the Pope who lived almost 500 years ago. Pius V, before he became Pope, was a religious. He was a Dominican, which is a mendicant order. That means an order that lives in poverty and begs for their sustenance in order to live. And their habit that they wear is white. And when Pius V was called upon to become the Pope, he was happy to fulfill this mission, but he did not want to give up being a good Dominican. He wanted to be a good son of St. Dominic, as he always has been. So he decided to keep his white habit, and even as Pope continued to wear white. But Pius V was such a holy Pope that the other Popes who came after him wanted to keep wearing white as well. Now I know a lot of you boys over there, and I know you're still paying attention to me, like to play mass at home. This is no reason for you to rush out now and have your mom make you a white cassock. Nevertheless, it's important 
for you to know why the Pope wears white. So to this very day, so holy was Pope Pius V that in reverence for him, all other popes since then have also worn white. So Pius V was a very holy pope, and since he lived a life of poverty, when he became pope and saw that there in Rome there was a lot of money that he could do whatever he wanted with, the first thing he did was say, well, I have always been a beggar. I've always begged for my living. I don't know what to do with this money except simply to give it to the poor. And that's what he did. And as pope, he figured that he had always been a holy priest and always had gone every day of his life to visit and comfort the sick. And so he kept doing that and went to the poorest people in Rome and around Europe and comforted them by giving them the sacraments and even kissing their horrible wounds. And by doing this, people who were far away from the faith sometimes were so moved that they became Catholic just by seeing him do these things. That is one wonderful thing for you all to remember about Pius V. Another thing was that even though he was a pope, even though he became so busy with so many things in such a difficult time, he never gave up his practice of praying one full hour every day in front of the Blessed Sacrament, which is what he kept doing as pope until his death. One thing, though, besides the white cassock that I think you won't have too much trouble remembering about Pius V is that you can thank Pius V for having the Feast of the Most Holy Rosary. The reason why we have the Feast of the Most Holy Rosary is that in his time, a people called the Turks were threatening to take over all of the Christian world. And so Pope Pius V organized a whole great fleet of all Christian princes to go out and meet the Turks and stop them. And he, since he was a good son of St. Dominic, St. Dominic was the one who received the Most Holy Rosary from Our Lady, he then asked all people in Europe to pray the Rosary every day so that the Christian fleet would obtain a victory against the Turks. And they did, on the 7th of October, 1571. And you might imagine, at that time, there was nothing modern, no modern ways of letting people know news. And so it might have taken a very long time for anyone to find out that the Christians had won. But not for Pius V, because he was sent a message from an angel right at the very moment that the victory was obtained. And so he knew right away and ordered all of Rome to go into prayers of thanksgiving for the great victory. And so he declared that that day of that great victory should henceforth be a feast of Our Lady of Victory, which over time came to be known as the Feast of the Most Holy Rosary. So we should always thank Pius V and pray to him, especially when we remember this great feast of the Most Holy Rosary. And I know all of you are very faithful in your rosary and will be even more so today after you receive the scapular. Just one last thing for you to remember. The sermon is almost over. I told you a little while ago that on the altar, there's a very old chalice, one that goes back 500 years to the time of Pius V. And the missile's not quite that old, but it's the oldest one I could find. And it looks almost exactly like the missile would have looked at the time of Pius V. And the reason why I point that out to you today is because you can always thank St. Pius V for giving you the Mass that you know. When you come to Mass here at St. Mary's, you can always give thanks to Pius V that you're able to come to Mass in this way. He was the one who gave us that book that you find on the altar called The Missal. He was the one, in order to protect the way the Catholics always had prayed, put all those prayers together in a book 
that should never again be touched, so that from now until the end of the world, we always have that true way of praying the Holy Mass, a way that has been observed in Rome and in the Christian world all the way back to the time of the Apostles. We have so much to thank him for, and it's very important now as you prepare to make your First Holy Communion during this Holy Mass and receive the body and blood, the soul and divinity of Christ for the very first time to ask for the prayers of Pius V and of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary so that you may make a fervent Holy Communion, not just this time, but now every time that you come to church for Holy Communion. I ask now then the prayers especially of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary, of St. Joseph, and of St. Pius V, that you may all make a good and Holy Communion and stay true to the Holy Mass every day of your life, and so go to meet those holy saints in heaven. Amen.